a bad gas valve on a six-year-old furnace. The owner decided he wants to buy a new furnace. So measured her up. He's got this 20 by 25 filter that comes out at an angle. He wants to get rid of that because that drawer hits his water softener. So we're just going to put in a regular one-inch filter boot there where the where the filter comes right out the top. Uh, the new furnace is same width as the old one, 21, and it's 80,000 BTUs. Anything 80,000 BTUs. So it's this uh, N95 ESN 802120. You can see it's uh, 35 inches tall, 21 wide. So anything over 60,000 BTUs in a 90 plus furnace, I'm going to be putting a base underneath it, hopefully at least three inches deep. So the furnace is 35 inches tall. I'm going to put that three inch base with pads that go underneath it. So the new furnace in the base and the pads equals 38 and a quarter minus the height of the existing furnace to the ground leaves me four and a half inches. I'm going to have to cut off the sheet metal above the coil. There's a cased A coil sitting on top of the existing furnace right here. So the sheet metal above that coil is going to have to get cut off four and a half inches for this whole furnace and base to go in here. So what this allows me to do when I put this base underneath the furnace, and all of a sudden we can take the bottom out of that furnace and we can suck our return through the side and the bottom rather than just through the side. Because we only have a 16 inch blower compartment on that new furnace right there. <clears throat> so, we will show you that here. Three inch deep base all cut out here. Just got to finish bending it up, spot weld it together. I got a one inch bent out there to screw to the furnace. Uh, my eight foot sheet wasn't long enough to get it in one piece, so I got to spot weld on you know, one side on this. And then we got our cap, drop in cap to go on the bottom. So that. That's the upside down part that will go on the ground and we put these rubber pads once we screw this thing to the furnace we'll screw these rubber pads up one in each corner and uh, that'll keep us dry in case there's a flood in the basement or whatever uh, just a little overview of the shop here we got the four foot shear I carry 24 gauge, 26, 28. Most of what I do is made up out of the 26 gauge there. Um, you got the box and pan brake. My spot welder. That's what we're going to put the base together with. It's got water running through it. I got a tank over here, 50 gallon horse trough with a sump pump that pumps water to cool the tips on that. We got a drive bender here. Roller for round fittings, easy edger for your round fittings, uh, and a basic uh, Pittsburgh seam, and my 8 foot brake. Nothing fancy. Got heat in here, air conditioning, of course. There's our boot that we're going to be putting on tomorrow. Right there, 20 by 25, always 20 by 25, anything over uh, 16, 60,000 BTUs gets a 20 inch filter. And again, I'm big on, you'll see static pressure check tomorrow on the uh, cheap fiberglass filter. 90 cents is about as much as you want to spend on an air filter. So this is my install truck. We got our caps for the summer. You know, and everything, it's like a hardware store on wheels. Pretty much everything a guy needs, your gas fittings. Here's my 7 to 12 inch nipple tray. And my 1 to 6 inch nipple tray. Vacuum pump, nitrogen, oxyacetylene. Yeah, hornet spray. Get some filters, thermostats. Disconnects just about everything you guys going to need. Nice uh, supply of breakers. So when the 
you know, the newer ACs are a lot more energy efficient, so sometimes we gotta change the breaker. Okay, what's that wire? Longer nipples right there. Yeah, it's a perfect setup. Perfect setup. And then, uh, got the barn over there. And it's for, that's where we hide all our, uh, equipment we yank out of people's houses so the neighbors don't have to steal it or stare at it until we get it to the scrap yard which I do when I got about 10 furnaces I'll load up a load and take it to the scrap yard to recycle it we got my sheet metal shop right here back my truck up and drag four by eight sheets right in the door there get about 25 50 sheets at a time and, uh, yeah, this is the old shop right there. Corey and I are heading to change out the furnace. We're taking out a, what is it, a uh, six year old Lennox uh, with a bad gas valve. So I got the call, I got the call uh, Saturday, and he was the customer was referred to me by one of his friends. Thank you, Marcel. And uh, one of my competitors told me he needed a $1,300 gas valve. Well, I spent a bunch of time doing my own diagnostics, and uh, sure enough, it needs a gas valve. But I'm no stranger to changing the gas valve and then that not being a problem. So I always check all the safety. So I jumped out the, the rollout switches. Uh, pressure switch, the limit switch, just to make sure nothing goofy was going on with one of them. So, at that point, I was still worried. I didn't know whether it was a gas valve or the board. So, the way I figured it out was, so what happens is it goes through all its, its uh, sequencing, the uh, inducer starts, the pressure switch closes, the igniter blows, and then as soon as the board's sending power to the, uh, to the gas valve, I hear this click and everything shuts off. I get no fault code. It's probably the worst possible scenario you want to be in because you don't know, okay, is the relay on the board dropping out or is the gas valve itself the problem? So I pull the wires off the gas valve and check voltage going on the gas valve with them disconnected from the valve. And then finally I see my voltage, uh, 27 volts going on the gas valve at that point with the wires disconnected. With the wires connected to the gas valve, we had just that no voltage shows up at the gas valve, it just drops out. So uh, anyway, the customer on this job also does not like the way his air cleaner a drawer that's in there and it's a 20 by 25 by 4 drawer that comes out when you pull it out it hits the water softener so we're going to be changing that boot just based on that and I talked him into a one inch filter um, just because I know the static pressure is going to be lower and the temperature rise won't be such a problem so I'm always talking everybody into a, a one inch fiberglass filter rather than anything pleated whether so here's that six-year-old furnace that's got the bad gas valve. When I was talking about jumping out safeties, anything like this that's got uh, two wires going to it would be what I was talking about. So you could just take your alligator clips and put that on there and jump her across them and that will rule out that while the furnace is trying to fire. So one of these clips on that side, one on that side. Basically you got voltage going into that and coming out and if that if that thing's bad, it's going to break that connection in the furnace. It'll give you a limit fault on that one. There's another rollout right here. Uh, we got our pressure switch. I jumped that out before I uh, decided the gas valve was bad, and I jumped out the limit switch just because I've seen little switches like this cause cause it to look like okay, we got voltage going in the gas valve, and then it drops out right away. So. I will never change a gas valve without checking those items. So right now I got the thermostat turned off. I'm going to turn it on with jumpers across RMW to mimic what the, the thermostat would do. Just rule out the thermostat and the furnace should try and fire. Okay, so our inducer starts. 
and then this yellow and orange wire right here go to the gas valve. That's those two wires. So whether I check voltage there or down here, it's the same difference. Turn my meter on to AC voltage. Stick my meter across there. The igniter's going, and look at what happens to my meter. Just goes to OL. As soon as that yep, power goes, it shuts off. We don't get a fault code, and it just starts over, and it keeps going in circles like that. Now, if I pull these wires off of this gas valve, oh, and stick my meter in there. Okay, now we're checking it disconnected from the load, and you can see we'll get our 27 volts here, which we weren't getting before. Okay, there's our voltage, so and it's staying on for a little bit, whereas before when we were connected to the gas valve, it would drop off right away. So that's how you diagnose a bad gas flow. So we're going to get going on this install here. Corey's disconnecting the gas piping right now. So this furnace is, what, 33 and something tall. And my new furnace is 35 and we're putting on that 4 inch, 3 inch base. So the base with the pads is going to add three and a quarter inches, and uh, so obviously we're going to have to move this coil up three and a quarter inches. So we're going to have to cut off that sheet metal right above the coil, right, right there, and then we're going to have to. somehow tweak that line set so that can go up four inches and then we're getting rid of this boot that the homeowner just plain doesn't like that even though he's got a stack of extra filters over there he wanted me to based on what I told him we're going to a one inch filter that pulls straight out the top here and we're gonna have to cut off that drop as well because the new boots a little bit longer so we're getting rid of that and Okay, so Corey's just taking the wiring apart there. The biggest thing when you're putting this back together or taking it apart, I mean, you got to think about how's this going back together? Where am I going with my PVC? Where am I going with my electrical? I want to make sure we don't get anything in the way of where the filter is going to come out straight up between that drop and that coil right there. We're just trying to figure out where we should cut the intake. We got the intake pipe on the right there and the exhaust on the left. Uh, so I'll probably hack off the intake right there, come straight down. And I always put a drain on the bottom of my intake now because in the summer months, when that, uh, the AC's running, somehow we get water draining, and I mean gallons of water draining through these intake pipes, and then they take out gas valves and boards and everything else. So you're always going to be thinking four steps ahead before you cut some of this old stuff apart to get it out of your way. You don't want to cut it too much. Again, the wiring, the low voltage wiring. We got a humidifier tied in here, so we want to make sure we know what's connected to what there before we take all that apart. Because this uh, humidifier control is tied into the board with the thermostat and the AC from outside. So always think four steps ahead before you start doing stuff. It's a while to figure out because this is uh, really a mess here. So they got this this five six wire going up to the humidifier and the way that humidifier wires on that model 60 control that april air model 60 which is the most common one these days 
Come on. Yeah, that one is coming down here. So that G gets wired onto the G from the thermostat. And then the rest of them are RC. And then the G they got coming from that control uh, goes to G on the furnace. And then W. So we need to know when the heat's on for the humidifier control. And then RNC powered up. And then there's another transformer that's hot that's just working the load on the humidifier that's mounted right there, that little one. Anyway, uh, then we got a four wire. We couldn't figure out what this four wire was. Uh, they had the two wire coming from the outdoor sensor on the humidifier water panel wired to the blue and the green going out to the air conditioner in a four wire. So that's the outdoor sensor and then they're using the uh, the other two for Y and C at the air conditioner, and then we have obviously our thermostat right here. Wire to G on home. Just trying to make some notes so I know how to put this back together, but you can see how it gets confusing when you walk in here and you gotta figure out who did what to all these wires. All right, so thinking ahead, it makes a lot of sense to cut that, that plenum off above that coil right now. I did some marking, so that little mark right there, is where our furnace is going to come through with the new base underneath it, which is right here. So we got our three inches plus our quarter inch pad sticking out of the bottom, plus our furnace 38 and a quarter comes up to that mark right there. So if we try to jam this in afterwards, uh, say we take the furnace out of here before we cut that off and screw it back together we're gonna have that coil dangling from the ceiling putting all the weight on the line set so always think ahead uh, so we got to cut off sorry about all the odds I got to quit doing that we got to cut off that four and a half inches but we need to flange out to screw to the coil so I'm going to take four inches off of here and flange off a little hiccup there we got the humidifier cut in right, well, right in the middle where we got to cut that off. So, I just pulled, I just pulled this off to make sure my hole cutter is not going to, um, there you go again. Hit the coil, when I cut a hole in the coil, I'm going to put the, I'm going to put the humidifier right there in the back of this coil box. <clears throat> So, shouldn't be a problem. Our lines is, boy, I'd hate to be the guy who put this in. This job's not so bad, doesn't look too bad, but they did put their plenum together backwards, the snap locks on the outside. Never seen that before. Uh, I've been doing this since 1980, and I've never seen anybody do this. This plenum cut off, and the... Uh, furnace moved up, or I mean the coil moved up, we just got to patch that hole, we cut the humidifier into the top corner there, and we're going to go get our furnace and hold this one out, and then we'll see how much dirt in the coil. Common problem, leaves or whatever come in and block the intake here. This one's got a bunch of dust in it, but it could sneak around. and get past there because there's a little gap there but yeah that's definitely not good you get all that stuff so that's a common pressure switch fault you gotta check that this is tore out everything's cleaned up Corey's opening up the new furnace here <sighs> coils clean and Corey's putting the base underneath it. We just popped the bottom out of the furnace. So that's what it looks like. Bottom's gone. And then we're going to cut the boot on the right side here. The boot will get cut through the base and the right side of the furnace. Put our boot on there. It's going to be flush with the back. We just traced our hole. And then once it 
gets that cut, <clears throat> we're gonna hit that with the uh, sawzall to get through this triple thickness down here at the bottom. And then we'll just screw the boot to it and uh, Or tape it, whatever we feel like. Every day is different. Every scene is different. I tend to rather use caulk. To me, it looks better. I don't like to look at silver tape, but sometimes you can't get the caulk done in there and you just go ahead and hit it with the silver tape anyway. So once we get the boot on there, we'll probably tape the bottom because we got this drop-in cap here. So I usually wrap tape around that. And uh, So you might want to mute while we hack through the bottom of this. you could hack them wires so be careful when you're doing that here we go that's ready for our boot to get screwed on these things I started buying these 20 by 25s are about 50 60 bucks I think I used to make these all uh, custom to fit with throat throats and uh, you know we got six inch stroke pretty standard and this one's six and five eighths up, you know. So when I used to make them, it was great because I wouldn't have to cut them off on the job. But I had surgery on my arm uh, a while ago, and I stocked up on a bunch of these. It just takes too long to make them; it's not worth it. So start buying them. But then you got to make your sheet metal work. If you know you don't make them to fit, so got this tape down here. Corey's cocked in the side. He's gonna hit everything. can make a mess with cock, so you got to be careful. It's a mess. We're just screwing our pads on the bottom here. We're going to flip this bad boy up and slide her in. stick down below our sheet metal but not much just enough to keep the metal off the ground and we're right by a floor drain over there so we may have to shim up that one corner if the uh, concrete guy pitched it properly it should be low in that front left corner so and then we always want to make sure our furnaces, our 90 plus furnaces are pitched a little bit to the front so the back of the secondary is not holding water. <clears throat> Go ahead, flip her up. Yeah, that was a screw. Okay. 
Go ahead. Bring her in. I don't know why that slip won't go down. What is going on with that thing? This slip is hung up. It's like it's got something stuck in it. Just how we pulled the old one out with the boot on it, and then we took the boot off. Careful of that floor drain mess there. Okay, you want me to lift up this coil? Yes, please. Okay, how am I going to do that? You get the gist of it. I got to help Corey. So, use the whole corner to buzz a hole up in that corner. And, uh, Took the cover off of this so we can get in there and bend the tabs over. We'll have to get some tape on that piece of insulation that's falling off there. <clears throat> Patch that hole. Put this back together. Gas vent and wire. High voltage coming in the side here. Uh, just three wire nuts. Uh, neutral and ground right and now we got to figure out mm -hmm. i think see we don't want to shoot ourselves in the foot here so we got to figure out how to do the gas which got to go right in this side i was bringing it in this side so we don't have to do any elbows on the gas inside the furnace because that's never fun so do we definitely the gas is going in there and this is our exhaust, which is on the wrong side, so I'm not quite sure what to do with that. Or the intake, so let me look at that. Corey, Corey is tidying up the uh, low voltage in here. And I'm working on a PVC. We got to do that first. This is what I mean, do things in the right order. If we were to put that gas pipe there, that would have been in our way. So, uh, I'm coming straight up. That is my intake right there. So, I'm going to hack that off like right here. Come straight down 45 over and drop it right down into my T here. And then the exhaust, these were crisscross. So, the exhaust, I'll just throw 90 on it and drop it straight down into the exhaust there. They had a 5 8 drain line on here. I never leave a 5 8 drain line existing over my my new furnace. So I always replace it with 3 quarter, which is what the code calls for. This uh, needs to be insulated or it's going to drip all over my new furnace. So I'm going to insulate that with foam tape. And now we just got to bring the drain line around from the humidifier. Corey's working on the drain for the furnace. So those are our three drains we got. And then we just got gas piping. Low voltage is all done. Okay, we're gonna set the fan speed for the air conditioner here. Um, it's an 80, 21, 20. Then we got a three ton air at 0.5 static. So we come down to 1200, 1130 is close enough. So we want to put the blue wire or the orange wire on. I go through the furnace, where at? Anywhere? Okay, heat is hooked up to blue. Right then? So we're gonna use the orange wire for cooling. Right at the top of the furnace. So cool. Corey's popping holes for our static pressure. 
He's got one up here beneath the coil. Oh, yeah. And we're gonna put one right here. Okay. Right down. Video. So, uh, checking our combustion in the air. We got 73 parts per million. It's, you know, about normal. Set that at three and a half inches of water column. Tubes now. Well, what's the temp up there? 130. What's over there? 130 and I think that was 70, so 50. Is our temperature rise? Um, close this. Pull them off of there and stick that. So this one goes on positive. What do we got there? Point one, okay. So total static is point four. Seven inches of water column. Point five is the magic number we want to be below, so that's perfect. What is it without this one? Point three five. Okay, that's your static pressure. Uh, temp rise. We said what's that at? Let me see it. One thirty. Four down. 130 and uh, we had 70 down here, so we got a 50 degree rise. O2 is six percent, CO2 eight and a half. All right, so that's it. Uh, wrapping up. Beautiful.